Alright, I'm back with my dad's pre-war Wards Hawthorne project bike. Uh, this is a bike that he had picked up at a flea market. I did a first part video on some of the damages on it and uh, I did forget to leave out the fact that the brake bridge uh, was crushed. Or I, actually, it wasn't a brake bridge. It was a fender bridge. It was a tubular fender bridge right here that it went across that somebody had tightened the fender in too tight on that tubular bridge and crushed the center of the bridge section down and just basically ruined it. So I cut that section out and replaced it with this uh, brake plate piece, fender arch brake plate. Uh, this is off the 80's Huffy Cruiser. Uh, this is kind of nice because now with the brake bridge you can put a brake caliper on there and one could run a three speed hub on there if they wanted to or they could just leave it without a brake and go ahead and run their fender on there. Um, I did kind of a neat one-off modification to this frame. Um, I cut off the top of the seat post here where it had an integrated clamp and you can see around the back side here when I had when I had this bridge out I drilled a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom and then I met them together with a slot, a relief cut so that when uh, I tighten that clamp there it will it'll hold the seat post in place and I I wanted to do that because it really accentuates the flow of the the body line of the top tube swooping on down to clear that off I think it's pretty cool um, this is not something I recommend people doing to pre-war bikes uh, the, I totally do not recommend that people go ahead and start chopping off their seat masks and stuff like that but if you if you look really closely you can see that, that this frame has a slight arch in the seat mast itself where I pointed out that dent before um, I did some work with the dent too I actually I, I heated it with a torch and then pounded a seat post down in there forcing the dent out a little bit so it won't need as much body filler so it doesn't look as severe as it did but when this impact was made by whoever whenever it was actually made so hard that it, it had bent the seat mast itself so this mast if you look you can see just the slightest bend in there which I can live with but because of that damage, that irreversible damage, I deemed that it was okay to go ahead and do a modification like this. But, you know, like I say, that's not something that I, I stand behind for other people, even myself, with other applications to go ahead and take something of extreme value that's that old and just start whacking on it just because you want to, just to see it happen. Um, but with that being said, um, I did a lot of work with the fork. Uh, that fork was so badly damaged with its hollow tubular legs that they were they were not only bent together, bent back a few degrees, but then the hollow leg that was of the old fork was all dented up along the back of it. So I just I just uh, switched the lower portions of the leg here. I uh, drilled and tabbed the you can see on the back sides of the, the other leg there that I drilled and tapped the holes in the this old Schwinn heavyweight fork here so that these can now bolt on so that the, it just makes it easier to put the assembly together rather than having to flex the legs out like you would have had to on their old design and I, I extended their bridge out uh, a half inch to give a little more clearance here for the head tube which will also accentuate how much you can see that brass head badge behind there um, so there's still some more work to do. Uh, that crack down here has been repaired. I ran my, my grinder disc right through the crack to open it up a little bit and then welded it, welded the crack shut. And that, that does a couple of things. It, it cuts out, it removes all the corrosion that is seeped into the, to the crack in the layers and gives you a nice clean material to, to burn into with your weld. and it also you know gives you that chamfer to, to lay in the weld so that the welds already lower and flatter instead of being on the surface it's a, it's you know at surface level more so and then I, I actually I did some hand filing on it to the point that it's so smooth you really couldn't even tell it's there it was ever there because it's not there because it's done <laughs> so that that's pretty much uh, up to speed at where we're at right now um, we're talking about a two-tone paint job with a one single scallop running in the center here. You can see where the black marker line kind of goes and thinking about a, a two-tone black and orange paint job. 
um, kind of like the Harley Davidson theme color. Something to that effect. Uh, it's still undecided yet, but that's pretty much it.